welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to bring you guys along on part two of my Abu Dhabi adventure. For those of you guys that have been following along, I have been in Abu Dhabi for a few days now, and now I am in part two because I am now at the W Hotel on Yaz Island in Abu Dhabi. And for those of you guys that don't know who I am, hello, hi, how's it going? My name's Anika and I'm an American that lives in London, but obviously I am abroad and I am traveling right now and I wanted to bring you guys along with me and showcase what I get up to in Abu Dhabi. So for those of you guys that have been following along on my Abu Dhabi adventure, you guys would have seen that I was actually at Qasar al Sarab, which is a resort out in the middle of the Arabian desert. It's beautiful. It's about two hours drive from Abu Dhabi itself. I recorded everything about that resort in part one. And if you guys have not seen that video yet, I will link it up in the cards for you right now and down in the description of this video. But for the next two-ish days, two and a half days, I am now back in the center of Abu Dhabi. I am staying at the W Hotel, as I already mentioned, which is so exciting, by the way. So I'm kind of an F1 fan. I'm a pretty big fan. And um, the W Hotel here in Abu Dhabi is such a unique hotel because it actually straddles the racetrack. Obviously, there isn't a race on this weekend, but it's really cool to see the racetrack. And it also has a beautiful view of the marina. Our room also has an amazing view of the marina. But it's cool because I get to see the racetrack. I also am really excited to possibly go see the mosque and some of the other attractions here in Abu Dhabi. A little bit of a hiccup that I'm trying to sort through is that they're saying that we have to have a negative PCR test. They're saying that to get into some of the main attractions or the bigger public places, we have to have a PCR test. But we didn't actually need one to fly from London to Abu Dhabi. They didn't require it at the airport, nothing like that. So we're going to have to go take care of that in order to go into some public places. So yeah, just a forewarning, if you are coming to Abu Dhabi, just triple, quadruple check it. Things are always changing. But anyways, I'm excited to go out and explore with you guys. So let's head out. Okay guys, so we went and got our PCR test. We had to go to Yaz Mall for that and got that done. So waiting for the results. So we can't really go anywhere else in the city because they are highly checking this uh, PCR testing just to make sure everyone's super safe and secure, even though you don't need a PCR test to actually fly into Abu Dhabi, but you do need a PCR test to go into public places. We learn something new every day and the government rules are changing every day, but we got that done and came back to the hotel. I'm at the W as I mentioned, and I am at the Sun Lounge, which is their rooftop pool. It's gorgeous and it's actually the only restaurant that's open right now in the hotel. Everything else open later in the evening and it's because this month that we are here it's actually Ramadan and Ramadan is obviously the holy month for Muslim people and everyone's fasting so none of the restaurants are open so another little thing that we're learning I mean we kind of expected that but we didn't expect 9 p.m. because the sun set at 6 so anyways I am just gonna order some food here at the poolside bar luckily it's open and I'm gonna have a little walk around it's so amazing being here because literally this is the only hotel that covers an f1 racetrack and it's so cool seeing it because I obviously watch it and seeing it is like bringing TV to life so so far so good here and I'm excited to kind of actually get out into Abu Dhabi tomorrow once we get our test results back but for now I'm gonna enjoy this lovely pool view behind me as well as some dinner and some cocktails. The hotel did give us free vouchers for cocktails, so gonna take advantage of that. two in Abu Dhabi well really day one and a half but now I am sat down at breakfast at the W Hotel our breakfast is included with our stay much like Qasar al Sarab it's a great spread lots of different options to choose from from Asian food Middle Eastern food and the typical eggs hash brown that kind of thing so I'm gonna eat my breakfast now and I will catch up with you guys when you go we go out to explore Right, guys. 
guys, as I showed you last night, the W is right on the Abu Dhabi F1 circuit and it's just right here, which is crazy because it's just outside where I just had breakfast. There's even like a patio area where you can actually eat. And I'm just thinking, what do I have to do to make sure that I'm here for an F1 race? Honestly, this is so amazing. Then you can see the marina right there where all the yachts are parked. But this is crazy because this is actually the racetrack here that they run around. And for those of you that follow F1, it's last year where Lewis Hamilton lost to Max Verstappen. Anyways, loving, loving, loving that I'm literally staying on top of the F1 track. Made it to Yaz Mall. So we tested negative on our PCR test, which is absolutely necessary here in the UAE. Even though you don't need it to get in, you have to need it to get into places like this mall. And so having a little bit of a wander around, it is middle of the day, which is also the middle of the fasting day here because it is Ramadan. So honestly, everything looks really dead and empty, but that's kind of like how I like it. So just gonna have a little wander, see what type of shops there are here, see what we can get up to. afternoon shopping as you guys would have seen here at Yaz Mall in Abu Dhabi. I have to say it is so interesting to see obviously the cultural differences. I've gone into places like Zara and H&M and they're just so conservative which is nice. I actually bought a new dress that I don't think I would see at a Zara back in London. Um, overall the prices are basically the same that you can expect in London that you would expect here if you did the exchange rate. And uh, yeah, I've had a good afternoon so far, just heading back to the hotel now to kind of relax and to chill out. Oh, one other thing I actually did notice is that Middle Eastern people love their perfumes, especially oud, and there are so many perfumeries or like cologne shops. I swear, every two minutes that you walk by anything, they're always trying to spray you with some sort of perfume. Overall, it's just uh, it's a really unique experience and then also very unique to the UAE and Middle East, but overall had a really good time shopping. Now let's head back to the hotel and uh, I'll show you what I get up to when I get there. Right guys, back at the hotel, a little bit of an outfit change from what you guys saw me in this morning. The main reason is because I am getting ready to go to the Grand Mosque here in Abu Dhabi. For those of you guys that don't know about the mosque, it is, I think, it actually is the largest mosque in the world. It's super white, super famous, but the mosque has very strict dress code and camera rules. So for women, you have to be fully covered, likely in an abaya. So I'm gonna have to actually probably go out and try to find one because I didn't bring anything conservative enough for this trip. And to be honest, I don't own anything that covers my head and my full body all the way down to my feet in that way and is loose fitting in that way. So I'll probably go find one. But also, they aren't allowing cameras at the mosque, at least not the vlogging setup that I have. So I'm going to try to get as much footage on a phone for you guys, and I will take you guys along with me as much as I can. So let's go to the mosque.
I just walked out of the Grand Mosque, which you can see right there behind me, and I absolutely enjoyed it to bits. It is so grand, literally everything is over the top. It's so large, but it's so beautiful. A must, must see when you come to Abu Dhabi. Um, fair warning, they are pretty strict on the dress code, so please make sure you check out everything on their website about what you can or cannot wear. You really do have to cover up all the way to your wrists and down to your feet. I would recommend a bigger, baggier dress, which is what I got from Zara, and then you have to have a headscarf or some sort of scarf covering your hair as well as a female. But other than that, they let you take your time in there. You can enjoy taking as many photos as you want and you can also just take it all in because it's absolutely stunning there's some amazing chandeliers in there that are built um, I think one of the largest or the third largest in the world and they have Swarovski crystals in them as well but overall such an amazing experience I highly recommend you guys check it out when you come to Abu Dhabi hey guys so today is day two or two and a half and our last day in Abu Dhabi I hope you guys enjoyed coming to the mosque with me yesterday it was truly an amazing experience and I genuinely just was overwhelmed by how large the mosque is I think you read a lot of things online and a lot of people tell you like it's truly a magnificent structure and just how they've built it and how wide it is but it really really is massive and a must see when you come to Abu Dhabi also I would recommend going at night because I think a lot of people go during the day because you want to see it you know in the light but it is very well lit at night so I would say at night is better it's cooler because obviously during the day in Abu Dhabi it's boiling hot and I have to say that I think that you get to see all the finer details in the mosque at night because during the day it's so bright that you have to wear your sunglasses everywhere and I just feel like you're not getting as good of a look at the mosque and like I said just take your time there's no rush they do not rush you which is amazing anyways the mosque was amazing that was one of the main reasons why we took the extra days to stop over in Abu Dhabi rather than just going back from the resort back to London so today we're gonna probably take it easy we don't have any real plans today because we take a midnight flight out of here back to London but because we're staying at the W Abu Dhabi and because it's over the F1 racetrack we might go down there and explore it later today and also the marina um no set plans just packing really and gonna head back to london um if you guys like vlogs like this and you like coming along with me and me showing you what i get up to when i travel around the world please make sure to give this video a thumbs up so i know to create more content like this for you guys and as i was saying yesterday so with the mosque you have to be very modestly dressed and you as a woman have to have your legs completely covered down to your ankles and a long sleeve top and everything has to be very loose fitting so if you aren't correctly dressed you have to either buy an abaya or rent an abaya from them during covid times they don't actually let you rent the abaya anymore so you have to buy them and i personally didn't want to buy an abaya because i don't see myself re-wearing it and i thought it was a bit of a waste and Honestly, they're not exactly cheap. So instead, I decided to go to Zara here, which you guys would have seen where I was shopping around. And they have a very unique style here at Zara because everything is a little bit more loose fitting, more modest, longer. So I basically got a long summer dress. And my long summer dress, I got it, you know, a little bit bigger, baggier, whatever you want to say. And because it was loose enough and because it had long sleeves as well as down to my ankles, and then I had a headscarf that I had wrapped around my hair, that was acceptable. So you don't necessarily have to go buy a new outfit or anything, but you do have to dress modestly and my dress worked. So if you guys do want to visit the mosque, obviously dress appropriately. There were so many people that just did not get it, that this is a place of worship and you do have to, you know, respect the rules that they create so just make sure you pack appropriately even though it's the middle of the desert it's super hot you do have to be covered to actually enter and they will deny entry if you do not so yeah my tip is to go check out the zara in yaz mall and you'll be able to find something that's modest enough so guys as you know i'm staying at the w hotel which is the only hotel in the world that actually straddles the f1 circuit or racetrack so i decided to actually walk down here and check it out because on mondays and wednesdays here in abu dhabi they have what they call yaz train and what you're allowed to do is actually get onto the circuit and you're allowed to walk or cycle around it it's a great initiative to help you kind of get more fit and just be able to use the facilities because most of the year they don't actually have a 
you know, race on. So they're letting locals and anyone who wants to actually come and train and walk around and they have like fitness classes and they have food and drinks and stuff set up. Um, because of Ramadan, it's not opening until 7.30. We, I got here a little bit early at six, but I'll take you guys around, show you what's up and let's have a little explore of the racetrack and train Yaz. So also at Yaz yeah Central, right where the opening is for the track, there is a wall of fame where all of the winners have their handprints on this wall right here. So there's like Willis Hamilton, and I think there's Sebastian Vettel as well. So really cool to obviously see all of the past winners here at Yaz Marina and their hands. So guys, I'm just waiting for us to be allowed onto the track for Train Yaz. It starts at 7.30 and behind me, you can actually see the track and the stands and I think this is the first corner because I think over there is where the start line is normally for F1. I really can't tell. It is so different when you're out here on the track versus when you're actually watching things on TV. But for me, this is just super exciting. And if you watch Formula One or Drive to Survive on Netflix, you'll know obviously how exciting it is to be out on this track and be able to see where all the legends race. Whoop whoop. Oh my gosh. I'm out here on the track guys, pedaling away. Pretty impressed. I know how to ride a bike that's not stationary. <laughs> guys you would have just seen me actually cycle around the Yaz circuit or the Yaz Marina circuit and that was so much fun I absolutely loved it and I thought it was so much fun to be able to actually get a bike for free by the way and a helmet and you got to go around and just you know explore it and get to actually ride around the track like you're a race car driver except on a bike I absolutely love it if you actually come to Abu Dhabi I highly recommend you check it out and try it out for yourself as well so I'm actually back at my hotel now and I am waiting for my cat back to the airport because today or tonight is my last night in Abu Dhabi I had such a fun time I hope you guys did too and enjoyed coming along with me on this adventure if you guys enjoy my vlogs and like seeing what I get up to please make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know to create more content like this for you guys in the future and if you haven't already subscribed please hit that big red subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you know exactly when my next video is going live I am traveling some more and I will be creating more content for you guys so please make sure to subscribe and I hope to catch you guys in my next video. Bye!